Rochester, step on it. It will be late for the broadcast. Okay, boss. Don't turn here. We've got to pick up Miss Livingston. Pick up Miss Livingston? Yes, then we've got to pick up Mr. Harris and Mr. Wilson. This is our first program, and it's up to me to gather my little group together. What are you, mother hen? Never mind what I am. Be careful of those bumps. It's a wonder you wouldn't put a little air in these tires. There's plenty of air that just ain't enough tires. <laughs> now, don't be so funny. I've got a brand new one on the front. Sure stands out, don't it? <laughs> Rochester, just drive. Take it easy. Here we are at Miss Livingston's house now. There she is, waiting for us. Oh, yeah, doesn't she look cute? Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. Hello, Miss Livingston. Gee, Mary, I called you only ten minutes ago. I'm surprised to see you all dressed up and waiting for us. I owe it all to zippers. <laughs> Well, they are very handy. Well, hop in the car. We got to get to the studio. Okay. Hold those springs down. I don't want to tear my new dress. All right. Get in. There you are. Ouch! They got me. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Rochester, how many times have I told you to fix these seat cushions? Either nine or ten. <laughs> well, I wish I knew what number was bingo with you. <laughs> Now, get going. We still got to pick up Phil and Don. Okay, boss. This motor's a little cold. Gee, Jack, I thought you told me you bought a new car this year. I said nothing of the kind. I said I was looking at new cars. That'll never start a boom. <laughs> Rochester, this is a two-way co a conversation, so keep out of it. Oh, Jack, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Still driving a 1920 Maxwell. Now, wait a minute. It's a late 1920. <laughs> anyway, in a couple of weeks, I may trade it in on a new model. Don't do anything rash. I hear the horse is coming back. Well, thanks for the tip. Now, turn here at this corner, Rochester. We've got to pick up Mr. Harris. I think we better stop and get some gas. Gas? Yeah, oh, so we can make it. We've only got about five more blocks to go. I know, but we've been riding on bar time all week. <laughs> what are you talking about? Look at that gauge. The needle says full. You glued it there. <laughs> I did not. Now, hurry up. We've got to get to Mr. Harris. Uh, where are we going to meet Phil? Well, he told me to pick him up at Maisie's Beauty Parlor. He's probably getting the bags under his eyes pressed. <laughs> oh, Jack, you're always running him down. I am, eh? Yes. You're just jealous because Phil's handsome and you're you. <laughs> Look, Mary, if you think I'm homely, why don't you come right out and say so? It was perfectly clear to me. <laughs> Rochester, when I want anything decoded, I'll ask you. Until then, hush your mouth. Now pull over. There's the beauty parlor. Rochester, run in and get Mr. Harris. We haven't much time. Never mind. Here he comes now. Oh, yes. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mary. Hello, Phil. Well, how do I look? Oh, just like Ann Sheridan. Now get in the car. <laughs> Move over, Mary. Boy, what an afternoon I had, sitting under that hot dryer. Hey, I can imagine. Who does your hair feel, Gladys or Maybell? Oh, I always use Goldie. She can curl rings around the other girls. Hmm. You know, Phil, if you'd wave your baton more and your hair less, I'd be a lot happier. <laughs> Have you any good orchestra numbers prepared for our first show? Darned if I know. I haven't seen my boys in a month. Why, Phil Harris, you mean to say you haven't even rehearsed for our opening program? We'll be on the air in five minutes. All right, so my band will sound spontaneous. Spontaneous? Yes, Mary, that's French for lousy. <laughs> Can you imagine that? A guy has all summer to get a couple of numbers ready and doesn't do a thing about it. Ah, oh, stop worrying. My orchestra will sound as good as last year. Well, Phil, for your information, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, orchestra better get better, or orchestra better get. <laughs> get it? <laughs> I'd remember that, Phil. Who are you tooting at, Rochester? There's Kenny Baker. Kenny Baker, where? There he is, sitting on his front porch. Oh, yes. Hello, Kenny. Oh, Kenny. He can't answer. He's on another program. <laughs> oh, that's right. Say, Rochester, you better step on it. We still have to pick up Don Wilson. Mr. Wilson, my, my. Well, what are you my, my about? This car seats five, doesn't it? Yeah, but Mr. Wilson seats two. <laughs> Now, there's plenty of room, Rochester. He can sit in front with you. You know, boss, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, 
When fat men sit down in small cars, small cars sit down also. <laughs> All right, Confucius, just drive. Hey, Jack, isn't that Don Wilson's house there on the corner? Yeah, there it is. Look, there's his mother in front selling jello. Oh, loyal, isn't she? Slow down, Rochester. Oh, Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson! What flavor, please? Strawberry, and where's Donald? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Don's gone ahead to the studio. Oh, he has. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jello, get your jello here. Look for the big red letters on the box. Oh, isn't she a sweet little lady? Huh? Hey, Jack, look what time it is. Oh, my goodness. Step on it, Rochester. We'll be late for the first broadcast. I told you we better get some gas. This miracle can't last. <laughs> oh, it's downhill from now on, so hurry. Okay, boss. Not too fast. There's no top on this car. There was when we started. Oh, did we lose that again? Faster, Rochester, faster. Darn it, my hair's blowing all over the place. Well, stop complaining. So is mine. Yeah, but yours blows right off. Is that so? Come on, step on it, Rochester. We'll be late. Step on it. Jello program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Merry Old Land of Oz. Well, here we are again, folks, beginning our sixth year on the air for Jello. Sounds like a long time, but speaking for myself, I never knew time to go so fast. Why, it's disappeared before my very eyes. The way a Jello dessert disappears when you serve it to the family. For Jell-O has been good news to families ever since your grandmother brought home her first package of it more than 40 years ago. And it's better news than ever today, for Jell-O has been constantly improved. It's quicker and easier to prepare nowadays. Dissolves instantly and sets quickly. It's far less expensive to buy, one of the most economical desserts you can have. And that wonderful Jell-O flavor has been made extra rich, made so full-bodied and tempting that it rivals the real ripe fruit. So remember what I've been telling you for the past five years. Those big red letters spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. Land of Oz played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as this is our inaugural program of the new Jell-O series, I would like to present our master of ceremonies. Who is he? Who is he? To begin with, he's a star of stage, screen, and radio. Plays a violin and was born in Waukegan, Illinois. Oh, it must be me. He is humorous, witty, and spends money like a drunken sailor. Now that throws me off. <laughs> oh, well. So now, ladies and gentlemen, there you are. It's up to you. Who is he? <laughs> yeah, da 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 For heaven's sake, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I'm simply amazed at our audience. I've only been off the air 14 weeks. You'd think that somebody would have recognized me. Well, Jack, you can't exactly blame our guests here tonight. After all, they're strangers. Well, my father isn't a stranger. Look at him sitting in the second row. He's still guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Don, it's sure good to be back on the air again, isn't it? It certainly is. You know, Jack, I'm much happier when I'm working than when I'm laying off. Me too, Don. I hate just walking by the bank. <laughs> <laughs> What have you been doing this summer, Don? Did you have a nice vacation? Well, Jack, I didn't do much of anything. I just got on my yacht and took a cruise up and down the coast. It was a lot of fun. You got on your yacht? Why, Don, do you, do you own a yacht? Oh, sure. I bought one last July. It's a tremendous thing. Well, that's quite a surprise. You mean to say that you bought a yacht on what I... on what I... Well, I was pretty lucky in the stock market this summer, Jack. <laughs> oh, you must have been, Don. You must have been. Well, that was nice, Don. I'm glad you had such a grand summer. And you know, I've never seen you looking better. You've lost weight, haven't you? Yes, boating in the salt air will do that for you. I've lost five pounds. Five pounds. That's like a centipede losing a toenail. <laughs> five pounds. Well, it's a start. 
By the way, Jack, uh, what did you do on your vacation? Well, I wanted to do something different this year, so Rochester and I just piled into my car, took a tent along, and toured the whole country. You know, we sort of led the gypsy life. The gypsy life, huh? Yes, Rochester read tea leaves, and I played the fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> we did very well in Memphis. <laughs> and, oh, Don, I must tell you something. Uh, just a second, come in. Uh, pardon me, is this the Aldrich family? No, this is the Benny family. The Aldrich family has moved to another station. Well, turn my dial. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, how I'd love to. <laughs> well, anyway, Don, say, what was I talking about? You were telling me about your vacation, Jack. Oh, yes. I must tell you what happened when I was... Oh, wait a minute. I'll tell you later. Here comes Mary. Hello, Joe. What do you know? I'm back again on the Jello show. I hope I make you laugh and giggle. Chop, 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 and dig, dig, diggle. <laughs> well... Well, it was certainly nice to you, Mary. I didn't get a reception like that. Hello, Mary. It's sure good to see you again. Oh, hello, Don. Say, what happened to you? You look marvelous. Well, thanks. I've been taking good care of myself this summer. Yes, Mary. Don lost five pounds on his yacht. His stomach looks thinner, too. <laughs> <laughs> certainly does. Now, you've got quite a nice coat of tan, Mary. What'd you do all summer? Well, I stayed right here in Hollywood until we had that awful heat wave. Good thing you missed it. Yeah, they tell me it was pretty bad here. Then. Jack, it was simply unbearable. It was 107 degrees in my shade. <laughs> now, you must have been in demand, Don. <laughs> uh, say, Mary, you didn't stay in town during that hot spell, did you? No, I went down to Laguna Beach and spent two weeks with my aunt and uncle. Oh, is your uncle in business down there? Yes, he's a shill for a lemonade stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite a... That's quite a novel occupation. So you were down at the beach, huh? Yeah. And, oh, Jack, I must tell you. What? I met the cutest lifeguard down there. Yeah. What a doll. Uh -huh. He saved my life four times. Mary, how could he save your life? You always wear water wings. I bit a hole in them. <laughs> well, I was using your teeth. So you found a new romance, eh? What's his name, Mary? Barracuda Jones. Oh, I'd like to catch him or meet him sometime. Bring him over. Well, Don, I think it's about time that Mr. Harris got here. Where's Phil? Here I am, Jackson. Oh. Hi, everybody. This is Smiling Phil Harris, back on the good old Jell-O program. <laughs> yeah. Make it Jell-O. Back at the NBC studio, which is just a mile and a half from the Wiltshire Bowl, no cover charge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't humor him, folks. He's conceited enough. Well, Phil, that's <laughs> quite an entrance you gave yourself. Music and everything. Well, I had nothing to do with that, Jack. The boys planned it themselves. It was spontaneous. Is that from the French? Definitely. <laughs> well, Phil, at that, I don't blame you for giving yourself a build-up on the first show. And now that you're here, how about a number? Look, I'm an actor. I ain't playing till I get a little dialogue. Oh, a little dialogue, eh? All right, then. Tell me, Phil, what'd you do this summer? Did you have a nice vacation? I certainly did. Well, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Harris... Hey, wait play... a minute. What's the matter? I told you I'm not playing a number until I get a couple of laughs here. Phil, the easiest way for you to get laughs is to play a number. <laughs> now, go ahead. Okay, Jackson. Oh, by the way, Jack, yeah. I, I meant to ask you... Uh, Aren't we going to have a singer on the show this season? Oh, of course, Don. I'm trying out a young tenor. He's a kind of a cute kid, too. He should be here soon. Hey, Jack. What? Tell him about that other singer you wanted to get. What other singer? You know, the one you thought you could put over on the sponsor. I didn't try to put anything over, so don't... Well, what was it, Barry? <laughs> well, after Kenny Baker left, Jack thought he'd save a little money this year. I did not. What happened, Barry? He tried to get his canary on the program. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just figured it'd be a novelty for a couple of weeks. Besides, Dicky Boy can whistle Sunrise Serenade with the best of them. <laughs> Believe me. What's the name of this young fellow you're trying out? Uh, his name is Day, Dennis Day. His mother's here with him. How old is she? It's none of your business. <laughs> anyway, you'll meet him soon. Now, go ahead, Phil. Let's hear a good hot tune. Would you like to hear something about 107 in the shade? As if you could, brother. <laughs> Play anything. We can take it. Hold it a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes. It's for you, Jack. It's Mrs. Day. Oh, Dennis's mother. Give me that phone. Oh, boy, what I've gone through with her already. Uh, hello, Mrs. Day. How are you? Yes. 
Uh-huh. Yes, we're expecting you right away. Well, look, Mrs. Day, can't Dennis take his bath later? <laughs> I mean, we're on the air now. We need him. Fine, he's been in town three weeks, and he has to take a bath today. That'll never hurt the program. Quiet. <laughs> Now, look, Mrs. Day, I'm not trying to run your affairs, but you see, this is our first program of the season, and Dennis should be here on time. You know, this isn't a clam bake. We're established. <laughs> now, please hop in a car and rush Dennis over here immediately. What? Should he wear a blue suit or a gray suit? Tell her to wrap a towel around him. Mary. He can wear anything, Mrs. Day. Now, hurry, won't you? Goodbye. Oh, boy, what a lilac she is. Play, Bill, and that canary wasn't such a bad idea after all. was Go Fly a Kite from the Star Maker, played by Phil Harris and his spontaneous orchestra. <laughs> Say, Phil, that number sounded a lot better than I expected. Wasn't it good, Mary? Yeah, that was swell, Phil. Oh, it was all right, but personally, I thought the boys played a little too pianissimo. Too what? Pianissimo. Too loud. <laughs> Phil, even though you carry a union card, for your information, pianissimo means soft. Fortissimo is loud. Is that so? Would you like to make a little bet on that? Would I like to? I'd love to. Then you must be right. <laughs> <laughs> You're darn right I'm right. You know, I didn't study music 15 years for nothing. No kidding, Jack. Did you study the violin for 15 years? I certainly did. He admits it yet. Listen, Mary. <laughs> Mary, you can joke about it now, but when I was a young fella, I was torn between two loves. In fact, it was a toss-up whether I'd become a concert violinist or a comedian. I didn't know which path to take. Don't tell a finish. I'm reading the book. <laughs> That's very amusing, Mary. However, if you'd like to know the truth, the first time that I... Hey, that must be Dennis Day and his mother. Now, listen, fellas, before they come in, I want to tell you something. While they're here, I want you to show me a little courtesy and respect. I'd like to get this kid started out on the right foot. I remember that. Okay, Mr. Benny. And that's more like it. Uh, there's somebody at the door, kind sir. <laughs> All right, don't overdo it. Come in. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Day? How do you do? Come right in. Thank you. Come along, Dennis. Yes, yes, come in. Well, I'm glad you found the studio all right, Mr. Day. Did you take a cab like I told you to? Yes, it was a dollar sixty-five. Here's the slip. <laughs> Oh. You sure walked into that one. Oh, well, I don't mind. Then smile. <laughs> Mary, I'll mind my face and you mind your business. Oh, Mrs. Day, I want you to meet the members of my cast. This is Mary Livingston, Don Wilson, and Phil Harris. How do you do? How, How do you do, Mrs. Day? How do you do, Mrs. Day? And this is her little boy, Dennis. Say hello to the people, Dennis. Hello to the people. Oh, fine. <laughs> 
Well, naturally, Mary, he's a little nervous, aren't you, Dennis? Am I, Mother? Certainly not. Oh. Now, Dennis, I want you to feel right at home here. After all, we're, I know you must be a little bit nervous. We're all your friends, and we, we want to help you in every possible way. I'm indeed grateful, Mr. Benny. That's sweet. Now, Mrs. Day. Yes? Hmm. <laughs> How can a basso profundo like that have a tenor for a son? <laughs> Now, Mrs. Day, I realize this being Dennis's first time here that you're not aware of our schedule. You see, we have a very definite starting time. You have? Yes. We do our first broadcast at exactly 4 o'clock Pacific time and our repeat broadcast at precisely 8.30. Now, is that clear? Perfectly. And when is payday? <laughs> payday? That's not so definite. Miss Livingston, please. Oh, he'll get paid, Mrs. Day. Don't worry about that. Now, Dennis, I think that about covers everything. That's all there is, and that's all you have to know. You're here to sing, so just be on time and do your best. Now, are there any questions? Yes, when do I get some funny lines? Funny lines? I know how you feel, bub. <laughs> Phil, you complain once more, and you'll be known as the silent maestro. Now, Dennis, uh, Dennis, what song have you selected for your debut on our Jell-O program? I'm going He's to sing... going to sing a delightful new number called Good Night, My Beautiful. It's becoming very popular. Yes, I know. It's a grand number. Now, before you sing, Dennis, I thought our audience would like to know something more. Uh, know your age. How old are you? Fifty-nine, including mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not what I meant, Dennis. How old are you by yourself? Dennis is just nineteen. Nineteen. Well, nineteen from fifty-nine. That makes you forty, doesn't it, Mrs. Day? I'll take that. <laughs> take it. You snapped at it. <laughs> now, just one more question, Dennis. Um, where is your home? That is, where were you born? Dennis was born in Cairo, Illinois. Oh, Cairo, eh? Whoop! An Egyptian. <laughs> Bill, the boy was born in Cairo, Illinois, not Egypt. Well, a comedian like me overlooks them details. <laughs> I'd like to catch you overlooking the Grand Canyon someday. <laughs> now, go ahead, Dennis. We're all waiting and anxious to hear your song. Now, uh, this is the microphone. How do you do? <laughs> ah, you are nervous, aren't you? But go right ahead. You're having a thing to worry about. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for his first song on the Jell-O program... Dennis Day will sing Good Night, My Beautiful from George White's Scandal. Take it, my boy. Now remember, Dennis, breathe deeply. Yes, Mother. Don't forget the words. No, Mother. Come here, let me fix your tie. Oh, don't bother, Mrs. Day. You know this isn't television. You're quite fortunate, Mr. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Mrs. Day. Very good. Sing, Dennis. Oh, boy, I'd love to give her a hot foot. <laughs> The night will be lonely but beautiful When I am alone with my wonderful dream of you Darling, someday I hope that bidding you good night Will mean nothing more than turning out a lie Someday good night will bring me closer to you. But in the meantime, this will have to do. Good night, my beautiful. Just being with you is so beautiful. And tearing away from your arms is not easy to do Good night my wonderful There's nobody who is so wonderful Each moment with you is like living a dream come true So hold me close 
close to you, parting is such sweet sorrow. Your love is all I have to wake and fall to mind. Good night, my beautiful. The night will be lonely but beautiful when I am alone with my wonderful dreams of you. My wonderful dreams of you. Dennis, that was very, very good. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. Thanks, Mr. Benny. You've made me the happiest girl in the world. Oh. <laughs> oh, he is nervous, folks. Play, Phil. If you want to enjoy real delicious old-fashioned goodness in a new-fashioned dessert, a dessert that's quick and easy and inexpensive, here's the answer. Jell-O chocolate pudding. Yes, ma'am, there's the answer to your family when they ask you for something new for dessert. Jell-O chocolate pudding is the best-tasting dessert you ever dipped a spoon in. Rich and creamy with a satin smoothness, with an old-fashioned chocolate flavor, and a rich, full chocolate flavor that's tempting and delicious. And best of all, Jell-O chocolate pudding is just one of three new Jell-O puddings. There's Jell-O butterscotch pudding, mellow tasting and smooth. It has a delicious taffy color and a real true butterscotch flavor as appetizing as old-fashioned butterscotch candy. And there's Jell-O vanilla pudding, delicate and inviting, always a family favorite. All three Jell-O puddings are quick and easy to make. The simple directions are in every package and the easiest and most economical way to buy is three packages at a time. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding. This is the last number of the first program in the new Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Well, Mary, our first program is over. Aren't you happy? Yeah. Just think, only 38 more weeks and we can take our vacation. That's right. Gee, I don't know where to go. Do you? Oh, we'll someplace think of... Oh. <laughs> Gee, I don't know where to go. Do you? Oh, we'll think... I'm nervous, Jack. Oh, we'll, we'll think, think of someplace. someplace. Yeah, good night, folks. See you next week. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O. Here's news. There'll be another Jell-O product on the air starting next Tuesday night, October 10th. Jell-O pudding. Jell-O puddings will bring you the Aldrich family, and if you've enjoyed the adventures of Henry Aldrich all summer, we think you'll be mighty glad to know that he'll be with you this winter, too. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. Next Tuesday, October 10th. The merry old land of Oz is from the Wizard of Oz. Go fly a kite is from the Star Maker. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>